Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. I am determined that I am going to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus died to take hold of me. And if he died for me to enjoy my life, then I am not going to go around with my head hanging down being miserable all the time because every little thing in my life is not exactly the way that I would like it to be. I just wonder if there's anybody here tonight that needs a new beginning. Amen. So tonight we're going to talk about getting past your past. <laughs> But I want to start by just sharing a few things with you from this book. Winston Churchill boldly delivering a one-sentence speech to his countrymen. Legend has it that Churchill stood before a hushed crowd during the darkest days of World War II. So now here he is, he's going to deliver a speech in the darkest days of World War II. And people are waiting to see what this great word of wisdom is that he's going to bring. And he simply said, never, 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 never give up. Turned around and sat down. Now, you know, some experts say he did say a little more than that, but... These experts say that he didn't, so because it fits in with my message, we're going to say for the sake of talking about it, <laughs> that he didn't. But even if he did, that was what people remembered that he said. And you know, it, it's easy to give up. I just want to tell you that, that it is really easy to give up. You don't need the power, and I don't need the power of the Holy Spirit in our life to just give up. I mean, anybody can do that. But we are not anointed by God for give up. We're anointed by God to press in and press on and go through and be the people that God wants us to be. Do what he wants us to do and have what he wants us to have. God wants us to have a great life. He wanted it so much that he sent his only son to die a terrible death for us that we could have and enjoy our life. I love that in John 10:10, 10, 10. The thief only comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, I came that you might have and enjoy your life and have it in abundance to the full until it overflows. So if you're not enjoying life, then something's wrong. Either you're believing the lies of Satan, you don't have a right relationship between you and God, You're concerned and worried about all kinds of things that you don't need to be concerned and worried about because literally having a relationship with God means that we don't have to worry if we really understand that relationship properly. And I do believe that if you just won't give up, that you don't even have to be very talented or very smart. If you just refuse to give up, you will succeed at what God wants you to exceed at, succeed at in life. So this is what I put in this book. Whoever you are, wherever you're at, whatever you've been through, it is never too late to begin again. Maybe you didn't get to finish college and you regret that you didn't. Or maybe you never got to go and you regret that. It's not too late to start again. You can go to college online. You can start when you're 50. You can start with your sick when you're 60. You know, doesn't really matter. A lot of people just automatically think if they're over a certain age, then they can't do anything. Do you know that I did not even start this ministry until I was 42? Now, what do you think of that? I didn't even start. Now, I did. I had had 10 years experience in ministry before that. God was teaching me and had me in the school of the Holy Ghost. I taught home Bible studies, just 25, 30 people for five years, and then I worked at a church in my city for five years. And there I learned how to come under authority. Because if you don't know how to come under authority, then you're really not fit to be in authority. So maybe God has you somewhere right now, and you don't like the boss, and you don't think he's right, and you don't think he's fair, and you don't think this, and you don't think that, and you're sitting at the lunch table, dip, 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 like everybody else. Well, you know what? You'll just keep going around and around and around that same mountain until you finally decide, you know what?
God's probably got me here for a reason. And there's probably something I need to get out of this. So I think I'll just get it so I can move on to the next thing that God has for me. So that's just free. If you want that advice, you can have it. <laughs> Let's think about a few people in the Bible. Far from his potential wandering on the backside of the desert, Moses was called to lead a nation. That's a fresh start. Just think about that. He's living out in the wilderness. He had tried to help somebody from his race and nationality, thinking he was doing a good thing, but really he didn't do it directed by God. He just did it out of natural emotion. And then he was threatened by an Egyptian who said, I'm going to kill you. Well, then he ran, which God never told him to do. And he ended up out in the wilderness, the Bible says, for 40 years. And then all of a sudden, suddenly, I love that God does suddenlies in our life. Amen. That's like 40 years in the wilderness, then suddenly. Are you getting me? You know, 40 years in the wilderness, then suddenly the burning bush. Now he's leading a nation. A victim of a reputation known only as Rahab the harlot was rescued and given a noble name in the line of Christ. A fresh start. Stuck in a dead end job tending sheep, David was anointed to be the next king of Israel. Fresh start. Widowed alone and nowhere to go, Ruth is given a brand new, better than imagined life. Married the richest man in the country and ended up in the bloodline of Christ. That's a fresh start. <laughs> Ashamed, having given in to fear and denied the Lord, Peter is forgiven and inspired to preach at Pentecost. That's a fresh start. Amen. Caught in a trap of dead religion, persecuting the early Christians, Paul is transformed and called to write much of the New Testament. Brothers and sisters, that is a new start. And God's got a fresh start for you. He is the God of do-overs, the God of second chances, the God of fresh starts and new beginnings. And he doesn't even have any limit on how many you can have. So what do you think of that? That's the really good news, isn't it? That's pretty amazing. It doesn't say, and you can have two new beginnings, but after that, you're out. It doesn't even say you can have 10 new beginnings, and after that, you're out. But the devil would love for you and I and all of our beautiful people watching by TV to believe the lies of Satan that it's too late for me. I've made too many mistakes. There's no way to overcome the mess that I have in my life, it is just not possible. I'm too old. It's just too late. Let me tell you a little story. There was a pastor named Eric who decided he wanted to learn how to play the piano. He thought, you know, I'm not too naturally musically inclined, but I just think it'd be really great if I could play the piano because then if my music director didn't show up, I wouldn't have to sweat bullets wondering what I'm going to do. And so for five years, Pastor Eric took music lessons once a week in the evening. And every morning he got up and practiced for at least an hour before he went to the office. And although he didn't, you know, certainly wasn't a natural at playing the piano, he, by now he wasn't too bad. And all of a sudden his music teacher announced to him that she had entered him in a contest where he would be before judges. Well, he thought, well, I, that, that's too much for me. I'm not ready for that. And she said, actually, the pressure will be good for you. <laughs> it will be good for you to perform in front of these people. And you'll do just fine. You're better than you think you are. So he went and he sat down and he was quite nervous and it was a little bit hard to get started. But he got started and boy, I mean, the, the first few Lines, he was just flying through and just not missing notes and everything was great. And all of a sudden, he forgot where he was at. Didn't know where he was at at all. Got totally lost. Tried to figure out where he was at in the, in the song and hit a couple of sour notes and it sounded just terrible. He looked up at the, at the judges and saw some grimacing looks on their faces. And he just felt so dejected. He hung his head and just, he finally said to them, well, it's obvious that I've forgotten what I'm doing. And you know, that I'm probably not good enough to be here. Suddenly his music teacher walked over 
and whispered something in his ear. She said, it's not too late. You can begin again. I see, he never saw that as an option. So often when people have what they consider to be a failure, they don't even think that beginning again is an option. It's not even something that occurs to them because they're stuck in their past. Well, he did begin again, and he played it perfectly, and the judges told him that he did a very good job. You know, if you've tried something once and it didn't work, you might be surprised if you'd try again. And if you've tried 10 times and it didn't work, then at least you know not to do those 10 things again. And you now have those off your list and you can go try something else. It's time for us to let our past be in the past. And that can be your past from yesterday or this morning or 25 years ago. The past is anything other than this moment that we're in right now. You know, God loves new beginnings, fresh starts, second chances, and do-overs. Actually, it's a very interesting Bible study just to run the references in the concordance on the word new. I mean, God just really likes new things. Just think about it. Being born again is, wow, <laughs> well, that's a fresh start. Get a chance to just start fresh and have the Spirit of God filling your spirit and leading you and directing you. You don't have to try to live life on your own anymore. You've got God's help. He gives us a new nature, a new heart. He offers us a new way of living. When we get to heaven, we get a new name. He says he's going to send a new heaven and a new earth. And matter of fact, one scripture says, behold, I make all things new. You might say that God is the chief of change. Now, can I tell you that your history is not your destiny? Your history is not your destiny, but your history is very important. And I'll tell you why it's important. It's amazing what you can learn from your history. And so we're always saying, well, forget the past. And, and we do mean to forget the bad stuff of the past, forget the mistakes of the past. But that doesn't mean you don't want to learn anything from your past. Actually, your history is a great teacher because you can look back and say, well, this worked, this didn't work. I tried to live without God and boy, I was sure miserable those years. And then I had those couple of years where I was full on with God and they were pretty good. And then I backslid and five more years I tried to live without God and boy, right back in the pit. This is how I feel when I go to church and get in with other believers and I'm worshiping God and this is how I feel when I don't. This is what happens when I'm lazy. This is what happens when I work hard. This is what happens when I spend money I don't have. This is what happens when I eat more food than my body can take in and burn off. <laughs> History is really a good teacher. Dave shares on Friday mornings in our conferences for a little bit about our American history because he believes that if we don't know where we came from, we don't have any direction about where we're going as a nation. And so the more immoral the society gets, the worse our conditions get in the world. So we could look back at American history or other nations who have maybe at some time served God and then they've gotten off into wrong things. It's not hard, really, to discover what works and what doesn't. So it might be good for all of you to just have a little history journey of your own and think back through your life. Man, I know what my life was like when I was full of bitterness and I was angry and full of unforgiveness because my father had sexually abused me and my mother had not done anything about it. I know the result of that. I know the result of being mad at everybody. I know the result of having a chip on your shoulder and trying to take your pain out on everybody. I know the results of blaming people and trying to make people pay who had nothing to do with it. I know the results of being a controller and a manipulator. I know that when you're like that, people don't like you. You can't keep friends very long. You can't stay married to anybody very long. So you learn not to do that. So when I say that your history is not your destiny, 
I don't mean that you can't learn anything from the past, but in the way that we're teaching this this weekend, I want you to know that you never have to get stuck in a moment in your life where you failed. You don't even have to get stuck in a season in your life. Maybe you had a whole season of things just going wrong for you, and maybe you're in that season right now. And maybe God brought you here this weekend just so you could know that if you will refuse to give up and you will hang on to hope that God will restore not only the life that you had, but He will make your new life even better than what you think went wrong. Amen. I think this is going to help us all have a lot of hope. You know, we all have a past, every one of us. But the good news is that we all have a future. And even those of you that your life is pretty good right now, that doesn't mean you can't get better. So I'm looking forward to the future. We're going to look at some scriptures now. Ephesians 2, verse 10. I want, us take us, want to take us on a little journey here through the Word of God. Ephesians 2, 10. For we are God's own handiwork, His workmanship, recreated in Christ Jesus. You know, another thing God is, He's re-everything. We're redeemed when we repent <laughs> and we are recreated. He loves all that stuff. You know, the word repent, like the penthouse, is the highest apartment in a building. And, you know, people usually think it's pretty cool if somebody says, oh, I live in the penthouse. Because that's like, well, you can't get any better than that. You can't get any higher than that. Well, you know what? When we repent, that means that God takes us back up to the highest place that we can live. Fresh start. New beginning. All things pass away. And all things become brand new. We are recreated in Christ Jesus, born anew, that we may do those good works which God predestined and planned ahead of time, taking paths that He prepared ahead of time, that we should walk in them, living the good life which He prearranged and made ready for us to live. So here it is. There's a good life that's been prearranged and made ready for every one of us to live. Now, that doesn't mean that the devil's not going to try to steal it from us. That doesn't mean that he's not going to put up a lot of roadblocks in our path. But it does mean that we can outsmart him every time if we will learn to follow the leadership of the Holy Spirit. When a baby's learning how to walk, they fall down many times. Do you know that? A lot of scratches, a lot of skin knees, a lot of crying, a lot of whining. But you know what? They always get back up and try again. Come on. They always get back up and try again. And that's really what God's asking every one of you to do. No matter how many times you fall down in life, if you just won't quit, if you just won't give up, eventually you're going to get to where you need to be. You know, a new beginning is not something that you have on an escalator. It's something that you have one step at a time walking by faith. And what I mean by that is you can't just step onto this automatic thing and just... Amen? It's not an elevator ride. It's not an escalator ride. It's a walk one step at a time. And sometimes maybe you step into something, you're like, oh, man, I thought that was God, but that didn't work. Well, hey, just step back, regroup, get a grip, take another step. God will lead you and guide you into the best life that you can possibly have. But you cannot go to the new thing that God has for you if you're stuck. Maybe there's some people here tonight or watching by TV that you're stuck. I want to let you know that you don't have to stay stuck. Maybe you feel stuck in a dead-end job that's going nowhere. Well, then why don't you have the courage to step out into something new? Well, well, what if it doesn't work? Well, what if it does? I mean, I know we got to pay our bills, and I'm not suggesting that you be foolish, but, you know, a lot of times in order to have what God wants you to have, you, you got to take a little chance. I'm not suggesting doing dumb, foolish things, but, you know, you, you got to.
take a little chance and kind of get out of the boat. You know, you're never going to walk on water if you won't ever get out of the boat. Twelve disciples, only one got out of the water, got out of the boat. Now, 2 Corinthians 5, 17, although most of us probably could quote this if you've been around the things of God very long, we're going to look at it anywhere. Anyway, therefore, if any person is in Christ, he is a new creation, a new creature altogether. The old previous moral and spiritual condition has passed away. Behold, the fresh and the new has come. So when we are born again, we get a fresh start. All of our sins are not only forgiven, but they're forgotten, put as far as the east is from the west. So maybe I could just say tonight, why don't you stop remembering what God has forgotten? How many times are you going to bring the same thing up to God? Maybe he doesn't even know what you're talking about now because he's already forgot that. It's like, huh? Huh? Wait, yeah. For many years, I would kneel down by my bed as a young believer when Dave and I were just real young. and had two or three little kids, and I'd kneel down by my bed every night and say the same prayer. God, help me be a good wife. Help me be a good mother. Most of all, help me be a good Christian because if I can do that, everything will work out right. And please forgive me. Please forgive me, God. Please forgive me. Please forgive me. And uh, a few years went by, and I'm sure maybe God had been trying to say the same thing to me for a long time. But, you know, sometimes it takes a little while to get to where you can really hear God. And one night I heard in my spirit, Joyce, I forgave you the first time you asked me. Now you need to forgive yourself. And go on. Amen. So maybe there's somebody here tonight and it's time for you to take that step to just say, you know what? I'm going to receive that forgiveness now by. See, to forgive yourself means obviously you can't forgive yourself, but to receive that forgiveness means that you take it into yourself and, and you say it doesn't have to be a problem anymore. One of the things that I say often to people because it was something I heard God speak to my heart many years ago is, you're no surprise to God. God was not shocked about what you did this morning or what you did last week or what you might do next week because he knows the end from the beginning. And the Bible says that he knows every thought that has not even made it through our brains yet and every word that is still unuttered. There's not a thing about me or you or anybody else that God doesn't know. And still, he opens up his arms of love and invites us into relationship with him and says, I would like to recreate you in Christ Jesus. I've got a good life plan for you, and I want to get you up to speed where you can do the good works that I have for you to do and live the good life that I want you to live. You know, it's so important for all of you to realize that we all make mistakes, we all have weaknesses, but God is a God of redemption, and He's always there to lift us out of any pit that we have gotten into. And if you've been stuck in the past, I want you to realize that your history doesn't have to be your destiny. You can begin again. Whether it's a relationship issue, a financial issue, a sin issue, uh, a health issue, you can begin again. Extreme poverty is a huge problem in this area just outside of Hyderabad, India. But there are two young girls that we want to tell you about. Their names are Bhavana and Nandini, and they are facing something that is so difficult. The fact is, they are girls, and that's basically all it takes. My name is Nandini, I'm studying in fourth class. I have nine years old. My name is Priya Bhavana, I'm studying in ninth class. Uh, I, I am uh, 
14 years old. 14 years old. What kind of problems are, are your family facing? My father is not there in my home. He is swimming outside. I'm going to go to the house. 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 अंते हनी पटिच को कुंटा आउटकर लेदर नटवा दिरू तो अंते ये भी बंद ले सार पी पिल्ला लतोनी ट्रेडिशन सार में भारता उन्ना गन लेना टे सार ना को God is taking care of you yes God is taking care about me in all my necessities and he is giving me very good help then what do you like to do together we will pray together every day and we'll pray play every day Whenever we have time, we'll make funny jokes, we'll sit, uh, study, and we'll learn about God. What does it mean to you when you come here to visit and you see your daughters are happy? As I'm sure you know, there are many parts of the world where simply being born a girl and not a boy makes life very difficult. India is one of those places. Together we can make a difference, and we are. The girls that you see behind me are part of our Hand of Hope sponsored children's home. And we're able to not only keep them in a safe place, an environment that is loving, but to let them know that what society says about them is not true, that it's what God says about them that matters. They are valuable and they are loved. You are helping make this possible. Don't ever look at a situation and think it's too big to make a change. Together, we are making a change, and we thank you for being part of it.